you don't like that, I'm, I'm sorry. I guess that's gonna be tough. You are S-O-L. I think everybody knows what that means. Maybe some of the international friends don't, but you could Google. I got coffee, it's very warm. But we're doing it anyway. In three, two, one. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Today is Monday, it's June 28th, 2021. That's right, we're almost halfway through this year. My name is Jeremy, and this is my first cup of coffee. It's hot. It's not as hot as other places in the country. It's not as hot as the Pacific Northwest. Holy cow, you guys. I am so sorry. But it is hot. So we got up to 89. Yesterday was the hottest I saw on the thermometer. And the key is that it didn't get below 70 last night. Which means even with everything open and fans on, it didn't cool off in the house it's probably it's probably 70 in here right now maybe even 72 and we've got two more days of it hitting 90 89 so it's gonna it's gonna be rough I'm, I'm on the fence as to how I'm gonna handle this do I power through and try to finish my day really quickly do I more or less take the day off and not do much other than the things I have to do or because I have hours I don't use. Do I go to the co-working space where there's air conditioning, but I'm not gonna be as productive on the things that I need to do? Or maybe I find some hybrid between those three options. I don't know, but that's what I'm figuring out. And that all leads me to the summer robe and no lights. So I hope you had a great weekend. I had an interesting weekend. Some good stuff happened. So Friday was a, a, a wonderfully productive day. Got a lot of really good things done. Uh, had a phenomenal meeting with someone who may turn into a referral source, somebody that I, I very, very much respect. Um, I, I will not betray him. Um, let's put it this way. I could rattle off some companies that his firm works with or has worked with, and uh, you would know them all. They're big. He's done really big work. And... So a couple weeks ago, uh, I was at an event where he was speaking and I'd, I'd heard his name. I didn't really know him. And I just said, hey, what's up? Can we talk? Can we have a, can we have a chat? Grab a coffee? And he said, yeah, sure. So we did and kind of hit it off. He's a good dude. So there may be some opportunities for, for me out of that. And that, that's cool. That was the hope. Uh, after that, spent some time having a couple beers out overlooking the lake. If you follow me on, on uh, I think I posted that on Instagram personally, you might have seen those photos. And uh, just getting to know another, actually several other friends that I've made at this co-working space better. Some good people there. Now I'm kind of talking myself into going, aren't I? So that was cool. Um, and then just kind of came home hung out. Saturday, my my niece's eighth grade graduation party, which if you've ever been to anything like that, you know exactly what it was. It was it was just family and just food and I think I was the first one that started drinking. <laughs> I had a beer. And a couple other people were like, oh we can drink? And I was like, I don't see why not. People run into their cars. People opening bottles of wine. And then uh, the gym that I go to had a potluck. So I showed up at that. Good morning, Stacy. Happy Monday to you as well. And it was a very interesting mixed group. Not a large group, but a mixed group, fun group. We played Trivial Pursuit. Most people in the group hadn't played Trivial Pursuit before, which was very strange to me. I thought that was like a common denominator game. I thought everybody played that. Well, after about... 30 minutes of that, uh, I had gone, I think I went out to grab another, grab a beer from my car and came back and they said, we've decided to play Cards Against Humanity because I also brought Cards Against Humanity. And that was fun. We had a really good time. Now, 
I've played cards against humanity in some very mixed groups. But of the nine of us, I only knew three. I'm sorry. No, I knew I knew four of the people. There were people there I did not know. One couple was older, 70s. Have you played Cards Against Humanity? Do you know the cards that come up in there? It took a few rounds for everybody to get comfortable with the fact that we were playing Cards Against Humanity with essentially our grandparents. Although I guess for the ages of most people, their parents. Anyway, it was interesting. And once everybody kind of let it happen, there was some really fun stuff. There was some, some great stuff, laughter. It was a good time. So that was Saturday. And yesterday, because it was so hot, it was just, I did some work outside in the morning and then just did a bunch of things inside that I had to do. Now, one of them impacts this. One of them was setting up the new internet connection. I expected that to take one to two hours. That was four because all of my Google devices were being dumb. So here's the question for you. Does the picture quality look any different? If you're watching live, just let me know, please, because uh, I need to spend a month or two kind of tracking this back. Is this going to be a stronger, more stable internet connection? Are things working better? I'm going to guess not at this point because there's another piece of equipment I need to replace, but if it's already better, that wouldn't be a bad thing to know. So let me know, type that in the chat below if you, if you are so inclined. And there's one other thing that I did. I caught woodchucks. Three of them. So that was really interesting. Uh, I finally figured out where to put the trap, figured out where they were hanging out, baited it with cantaloupe. Oh, they're picking up my trash. Can you hear that? And when I caught the first one, it was the original. I'm guessing it's the mother, can't be sure. But I recognize this woodchuck, because we're gonna say she, even though I had named it Paul. This was like year three of this woodchuck being around. And the first year, ah, Stacy says that the resolution looks the same but haven't had any lag or stutters, great. It's very good to know, thank you. Woodchuck was so comfortable in the trap with me around that I gave her some more cantaloupe and she just kind of ate it and hung out. Didn't really mind. I did not kill them. I would never do that. We're not gonna talk about what I did though, but they were not harmed. The second one was very distraught and poop it on everything. And when I got close enough, oh, wood, woodchucks are stinky. The third one made this chittering noise that I put on, uh, I put up on YouTube and also put up a, a video of it eating cantaloupe on a stick. This one I wasn't even going to get close enough to drop them through. So I, I put a piece of cantaloupe on a stick and it was like, all right, I'll eat that. Now that the coffee's cooled off, it's really good. So that was my weekend. Did I do anything else inside? No, not really. Nothing of, nothing of interest. Just home upgrades and cleaning and laundry and you know all those little things that have to be done. But I'm glad the internet's better. There's, I have to buy one more piece of gear. It's in my Amazon cart. And I'm gonna record on the original connection, the Comcast connection, I'm gonna record tomorrow's episodes on that so we'll see after that I will I will switch over and everything will be on the new network and I'll figure it out but I'm probably gonna keep the Comcast connection for at least a month to see because hey what if this doesn't work well who knows I don't know Stacy says she saw the video of the cantaloupe and the chittering. Yeah, one of, 
one of the videos I put up was one of these woodchucks going and it was it was a funny noise I'd never heard any rodent do that and yeah woodchucks are basically big rodents if you look at them they have big teeth and their claws holy cow those claws could tear you apart after getting that close to them I am surprised that dogs are always so successful in grabbing woodchucks man I would have thought they would have had slightly different toes for grab for uh, digging but yeah so fingers crossed that my guard will be fine now that I'll be able to fill in the holes I'll keep the trap out for a while it doesn't cost anything to keep it out and how many how many chipmunks did I do last week the same non non murderous that I won't talk about thing I think was three woodchucks in the last couple weeks I'm sorry three chipmunks woodchucks chipmunks now it's Monday. You know what Monday might Monday means. Monday means it's time for another episode of Martial Arts Radio. Let's see if it's up yet. Who who's video? Who's up? Ah. This is a fun one. So, um episode 618 with Shihan Kendall Buell. Now, I have had the chance to get to know Shihan in a professional sense done some work together and always enjoyed his our, our conversations smart guy insightful guy very passionate about the arts done some other interesting things and I said you know we got to get you on the show and it, it took a little while because he's really busy has a job in radio and does some other things uh, fire department but he's also got a great voice like a great voice you're going to listen to this episode and you're going to say, man, this episode is even better because it, it actually is a really solid episode. And a lot of what we talk about is about a specific time in history, not necessarily martial arts history, but world history. And I found that really interesting. We talk about that. We talk about a bunch of other stuff. But through the whole thing, you get his great voice. I actually want him to narrate books. Maybe, maybe we can get him to narrate Master Hopkick Origins, because I think he would be a phenomenal narrator. When, one of the first times we were on the phone, I told him about the books that we write, and that through all that, I'd done some investigation on audiobooks and audiobook narration and what top-end narrators get. Top-end narrators make $1,000 an hour per finished hour, you know, so, but think about that. That means that in a couple days, let's call it three days for the average book. Somebody might make $15,000, $5,000 a day to be really good at what you do. Yeah. I don't have that kind of voice. I don't think anybody's paying me that much money. But maybe, maybe someday, maybe if I become famous. But Kendall's voice, yeah. If you had a choice between my voice reading you a book or his, you'd probably grab it. Choose him. I would. I just want to hang out. I really do. It's supposed to rain. It's supposed to rain like every day for the next 10 days. Plants are going to be really happy. I won't be. That's okay. I'll be happy because of the plants. So there's that. Let's see what you guys gave me to talk about. Do we have some things? Um, <laughs> got a joke from Stacy. How many nuns would a nun chuck chuck if a nun chuck could chuck nuns? I'm trying to find an answer that's rooted in like monastic context. Something out of a monastery or a convent. You know, like, uh, like the Whoopi Goldberg movie, Sister Act Two, Back in the Habit, right? Habit, if I remember correctly, is the headdress. 
I don't know where's. Yeah, I'm looking for something like that. I got nothing. So if there's a joke in there, if there's a, an actual joke answer, I can't find it. Uh, still drinking that Costa Rican coffee. Oh man. Oh, you know what else I did? I'm gonna give. I'm gonna tell you guys a secret. Not really a secret. I'm gonna give you a tip. So I ordered. I didn't really read the directions, the instructions too well, but I ordered, there's a company called Wise, W-Y-Z-E, and they make some really decent, great value, lower end electronic devices. The first thing I ordered from them was security cameras for a client. I was actually really impressed, so I ordered a few for myself. Well, they came out with a doorbell. And if you've seen the Ring doorbell, uh, and I think the Nest doorbell, they're expensive. They're a couple hundred bucks. And you gotta pay a lot for the service. I'm sure they're great, but I don't need anything that great. I've got, a, I've got some nice cameras and then I fill in with some lower end ones. Well, I ordered the Wise version because it was $30. Great, I got it and went, oh, you want me to hook this up to actual doorbell wiring? I don't have that. So I went online and did some research and was supposed to order a, a transformer. Plug in transformer to get the voltage right for this, this thing. And as I was looking around, I saw multiple people saying, there's a USB port hidden on the back of this thing. And I went, oh. And so I took it and I looked at it and yeah, there was a USB port. I didn't need to get that. So I got that all hooked up. Now, why do I bring this up? Because security is important. One of the, the things that I want people to keep in mind, when you think about security as a martial artist, what, what is one of the, our attitudes? Generally, it's, I'm gonna be as smart as I can, I'm gonna be as safe as I can, but my self-defense skills are something that I use when, when I have to. I don't wanna rely on the availability of someone else to protect me. Well, I think having security cameras around and making sure that potential criminals are aware that those are around is one of the things that you should be doing. The wise camera is pretty inexpensive. Uh, I will probably be putting out probably put one more on the other door. I have two doors that people people would come in through. I'll probably put the other one up. But the, the nice thing about having that USB port that I can access, I just was able to plug it in. I didn't have to do anything super fancy. I didn't have to buy a $50, what was that, 16 volt transformer. If somebody wants to break into your house, they're going to break into your house. It's going to happen. The question is, how much can they get before they leave? Because the cops are coming or somebody else is coming. Me, here, that's not the issue. The issue is I need to cover this place with as many cameras as I can. So if people do try to break in, I got them. I got their face. I got their license plate. I got it all. Now today, Monday, June 20th, would have been Pat Morita's 89th birthday. Pat Morita, of course, the instructor that so many of us wanted, Mr. Miyagi. I think you all know, if you've been watching a while, you know I have a soft place in my heart for, for that character, for Pat Morita, for Fumio Demura, all because of the association with that. I'm still reading, because I don't read often, the Master Hopkick origin story. And Jenny did a phenomenal job with that book. She really did. It's, it's incredibly compelling. And she did a really good job making it interesting, regardless of your age, but approachable to younger people. So if you haven't checked that out, check it out. But there are elements of, of Mr. Miyagi in that book. And I was... When I was reading on Friday, that was something that came through for me. And I was like, oh. it's, it's almost like I'm, I'm getting a little bit of that, that vibe. So that was really cool. So what we have today are some quotes from, I believe these are all Miyagi, not Morita. Yep. It's okay to lose to opponent, must not lose to fear. 
I believe that comes out of the end of the first one. Fear is powerful. Fear is crippling. Fear is something that people will lean on to avoid doing things. Just because something's scary doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. There are a lot of things that are scary. I do scary things every day. This is still a little scary. Years later, I've been doing this, what, three years? It's still scary. I am sitting in front of you about as vulnerable as I can be, talking about me and my life. I'm in a bathrobe. You notice that, that I keep, even though, even though I'll wear a shirt out that does this, I still want my robe like this. Still scary. But you don't let it beat you. I've said it before, I'll say it again. There are only two motivating forces in the universe, love and fear. Don't let fear dictate your actions. Let love dictate your actions. Be aware of fear. Know what is fear, fearful. Know why you're afraid, etc. But choose love. What is the loving decision for you, for the next person, for your family, for the martial arts, whatever it is. There's somebody on, on TikTok that I follow. And we're going to try and get him on the show. Because he would be an interesting character, has a traditional background, teaches at, a martial, teaches at his own martial arts school. I'm not going to ruin it by saying who he is. But he put up a video of uh, testing the other day. Kids testing. And there's a kid who's probably seven running through, it looks kind of like a Kihon or Kibon, you know, like a, a short form. And there's a comment. Somebody comment. I went in to comment, hey, you know, nice job, kid. You know. And there was somebody commenting about how terribly executed this technique was. And I was like, it's a kid. And then he just kind of ran off and replied, bra bra bra. I was like, um, it's a kid. It's a young kid. Techniques aren't powerful or bra. It's like it's a seven-year-old child. How many seven-year-olds do you know that even can even like move their body the right way? Seven-year-olds like run into walls. I was impressed the kid was standing up. Are there exceptions where you get kids with some actual proprioception? Yeah. Wax on, right hand. Wax off, left hand. Wax on, wax off. Breathe in through nose, out the mouth. Wax on, wax off. Don't forget to breathe. Very important. I think the reason that movie holds so much weight for so many of us. Yeah, it's relatable, but it's applicable. Good morning, Francis. When we, when we take a look at the training in Karate Kid, there's a lot of repetition. You remember the scene where Daniel's complaining that he hasn't learned anything. And Miyagi goes to punch him. And he says, wax on. And Daniel's, bam! Wax on, bam! And Daniel's looking, he's like, what just happened? What did I do? We forget the importance of repetition. We forget how powerful muscle memory can be. And I think that this is one of the greatest challenges in the modern era to traditional training. People don't just blindly accept doing things over and over again. It's hard to see the progress. And this is where instructors have to be a little more creative. They have to find different ways. You know, if you're going to have 
your students go up and down the floor just throwing outside blocks over and over and over again, how are you going to make it fun? Well, I mean, we've put out a ton of information on different drills and everything, but you can have them face different sides. You can have them retreat while doing it. You can change up the stance that they're moving in. You can have them do it in place. You can have them outside forum block each other. You can have somebody punch while they do it. You can, if you have beams, if you have upright beams, somehow every martial arts school seems to have a beam somewhere, hopefully not in the middle of the floor, but usually some kind of support beam. Put them in a line, have them form that beam, or the heavy bag, or a target, or a noodle, right? The more you can mix it up, the more energy they're gonna bring to it, the better they're gonna learn. It applies to not just forearm blocks, but anything. But that repetition is so critical. What would have happened if, if Daniel had said, after, you know, five minutes of waxing the cars, instead of, if I remember correctly, he did all the cars in the, in the yard. If Miyagi had gone to punch him, it wouldn't have worked. He would have just been like, bam. He wouldn't have gone, bam. There wouldn't have been anything really effective there. Habit breeds action. Next, we got two more. If karate used defend honor, defend life, Karate means something. If karate used defend plastic metal trophy, karate no mean nothing. I think that was in number two. I have watched the first one more than all the rest of them combined probably three times over. The first one is, is exceptional. Second one, meh, less so. And we can point to that and say, yeah, plastic, metal trophy. A lot of people don't compete. A lot of people use martial arts to defend their ego. And not in a violent way, but by building up a school and not training and not advancing their own skill and putting people around them that will Elevate them. Treat them in, a, in a, a particular way. That's not karate. That's not martial arts. They've forgotten what it really means. Because of fear. You must not lose to fear. They're losing to fear. They're afraid that their best days are behind them. They're afraid that they're no longer relevant. They're afraid people won't think highly of them. And it's a shame. Because their students are missing out. Stacy says, some of us do it to just put ourselves in challenging situations. Win or lose, I won. I stood up and did it. Ah, so you're talking about the competition part. Absolutely. There's a difference between doing it for the trophy and doing it for the experience or doing it for the, the growth opportunity or any of the other reasons. I think it was Friday. I got a reminder. More coffee. I got a reminder from Facebook. It said, hey, this, is your, this was your most commented post from five years ago was the last time I competed. It's been five years since I competed. And what was really funny was uh, Andrew said, Andrew knew exactly the, the form that I did, the kata I did. He said, I bet you did this. <laughs> and somebody else who uh, I haven't seen in a couple years, I, I got to know her family and her children somewhat from, from competition. Uh, I think the world of them. She said, hold on, I got a video. 
She posted a video. And uh, there were some spots I could clean up. If I compete again, I don't know that I'm going to compete with that form. I haven't done a, a form other than that in competition in a very long time. But it's been five years. Maybe it's time. Prior to that, it had been ten years. I competed at... Uh, Stacy says, don't know your form names, but the one with the awesome dramatic drop. Yes, it's called Kusanku. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I competed in 16. Prior to that, I had competed in 06. Prior to that, I had competed in 96. And so here it's 21. Maybe I'll compete in 2022. I don't know. We got one more. Thank you guys, you all. Hope you know when I when I say guys, I, I mean that collectively. I don't mean male. It's such a, it's such a difficult thing. That's that's a, a that's my generic term for a collective group of people is guys. I've been working on it. But I want you to go check out that episode with Sheon Kendall Buell, six eighteen. Great episode. I want you to, what else do I want you to do? I want you to leave me comments for tomorrow. Comments, questions, feedback. You know, we talk about a lot of stuff on this show and your input, you, when you say, go deeper on this, anything like that is a good thing. Oh, you know what else happened on Friday? I mailed out the Marshall Journal magazines. So those of you that are local will start seeing them pop into your, your mailbox maybe as soon as today, probably tomorrow. And I'm gonna guess that all of you will have it by the end of the week. And for those of you who will not, because you didn't sign up, uh, the digital version, we're, we're keeping an eye on. I want everybody to get it in their mailbox before we release the digital version. So um, Justin and I will make a decision tomorrow. Oh, one more. Come on, open up. There we go. For a person with no forgiveness in heart, living even worse punishment than death. I think that's from, I think that's from two. No forgiveness. <sighs> Don't be afraid to forgive people, especially yourself. Most of us are much better at forgiving everyone else than we are ourselves. Pretend you're a person. <laughs> Pretend you're a person other than yourself. What kindness, what respect, what forgiveness do you deserve from yourself? Treat yourself the way you want others to treat you. No one will ever treat you better than you treat yourself. Keep that in mind. All right. I'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Hope you have a great day. Hope wherever you are, you stay cool. I'm going to go shut all these windows now and figure out my plan. Hope you leave me some stuff. Check out the episode. And if you want to support us, remember Patreon and whistlekick.com with the code FIRSTCUP15 and Whistlekick Programs because we got more coming. Take care, everybody. I'll see you soon. Peace.